A partly sunny day, actually very pleasant temperatures for a baseball game as the Sox try to sweep Baltimore. They played two games since the break. They picked up two games on the Tigers, and you can't ask for more than that. Let's take a look at Jose Contreras and what's happened since he's come back from the minor leagues because it's startling as opposed to what he was before he left. This will be his seventh start, the record four and two, but the ERA spectacular at 206. He's only given up 30 hits in 43 and two-thirds innings, walked six, fan 38. That's just an outstanding ratio. Opponents hitting just 189. So a completely different guy has come back from the minor leagues, and hopefully Jose will have as good a stuff as he had the last two times against the Cleveland Indians. So as the White Sox take the field, it's time for our Southwest starting lineup. And for the Orioles, it's Ryan Roberts leading it off, then Jones, Arcakis, Huff, Mora, Scott the DH, Rymold, who's had a pretty good series. Greg Zahn gets the nod behind the plate today, and Cesar is Turris playing shortstop and hitting nine. The Lowe's defensive setup and how they'll set up behind Contreras, left to right, Posednik, Wise, and Die in the infield, Beckham, Ramirez. Gets and Canerco. Ramon Castro behind the plate. And the U.S. Cellular starting pitcher is Jose Contreras. On for his 13th start, looking for his fifth win, the ERA in the mid fours. And there you see the rest of the numbers. So, in order for Jose to be successful today, he has got to stop Roberts from getting on because if he gets on, he's going to steal. And the top two guys in the lineup are guys that will try to run him out of the ballpark. And that'll be the secret for his performance today. The conditions for today 68 degrees with 61% humidity. The winds not that much of a factor north 5 to 10 miles an hour. And it is partly sunny. The umpires behind the plate Brian Knight at first base Bill Welke. Tim Welke is at second and Jim Reynolds is at third. So as the Sox throw the ball around the infield and get ready to play. I'll turn it over to my play by play partner Hawk Harrelson. All right, Stone Pony, thank you, and once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Finale of this three-game set and third of the seven-game homestand. We'll finish it off starting tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday against Tampa Bay. But right here, Brian Roberts steps in, hitting at 280, eight homers. He's driven in 43. Starts it off a little line drive, base hit into right field. So good speed aboard. 18 for 23 in stolen bases. I don't think they're going to be too patient, even though this Oriole team as a whole this year hasn't done a whole lot of running. I believe they're going to try to take advantage of that situation against Contreras. I'd be shocked if they didn't. Yeah, in fact, this year, this whole Oriole team has swiped just 43 bases, been caught 26 times. And the Sox have been much more aggressive on the base paths than the Orioles. So here's a 23-year-old center fielder. Adam Jones takes first pitch strike. Jones hitting at 304, 13 long ones, and 50 knocked in. He's got good speed, but he's run into six double plays. And Every pitch they don't run Roberts is one more chance for Jones to ground into a seventh double play. Orioles they come in at 40 and 50 hitting at 269 as a club. They can score some runs. They have a 4.99 team ERA. Orioles at home not bad 26 and 21 on the road not good 14 and 29. Big hack, no contact in the count 0 and 2. And here at beautiful USA, the field. 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straightaway center. I don't mind seeing 0 2 pitch outs because normally when you figure a pitcher is probably going to nip at the corners, this is a good pitch to run. There he goes. No chance, Henderson the field. All of a sudden, we have one out and a man on third. Stolen base E2. 
And you see what Jose did was allow Roberts to get actually a running jump and you can't do that because you can't throw him out. And even though Getz can't come up with the throw. Roberts locates the ball right away. That's the secret on anything a base runner thinks is low. Pick up the baseball. Now the Sox bring the infield in for Nick Marcakis. That was almost a Louis Aparicio jump right there. Big walking and then running momentum towards second. That's popped up. Beckham a long way to go. Now makes the catch. And Roberts will not attempt the score. So a big out right there from a tough cookie in Nick Marcakis. And I think the history of Gordon Beckham helped him on that pop up because he was a lifetime shortstop. They're used to moving over into foul territory making the play. Even though it's a different angle from third base. This is a tough play. And he's able to not only make it. But aware enough to know that Roberts has great speed. He looks back. Sets himself but doesn't have to make a throw. So here's a man who has hit Jose pretty hard. Eight for 24 with a homer Aubrey Huff. Takes ball one. Marquez so to mention a tough cookie especially against Contreras he was eight for 16 lifetime against him. One high fastball he popped it up and left the man at third without scoring that's a pretty good job of pitching by Jose. Well that ball gets away. And he's going to score anyway. So it's one nothing. Well unfortunately. That one cost a run the third wild pitch. And a good job of pitching by Marquez goes for not. Jose throws that fork wall in the dirt. And Castro can't stop it. Well you have to score anyway. So here's the 2 0 pitch. That's a strike. This is the sixth meeting of the year between these two clubs, and the first five Sox have won three of them. A little slow chopper and a wild pitch. The arrow that'll go an unearned run. Meanwhile, it's up on that board after a half inning of play. It's Baltimore one, and the good guys coming to bat. Beckham, Wise, and Castro. The Lowe's defensive setup and how they'll line up behind Guthrie. Left to right, Rymold Jones and Marcakis in the infield. Mora is Tourist, Roberts, and Huff. Zahn behind the plate. And the U.S. Cellular starting pitcher, Jeremy Guthrie. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours. And Scotty Pods takes them upstairs, ball one.
There's a strike. Todd's hitting at 303. Three homers he's driven in 24. Sox 47 and 43 come in hitting at 265 as a club with a 4.19 ERA. Guthrie's going to throw enough high fastballs today, and a few of them will go out of the ballpark. And that has been his MO so far. Giving up a home run every five innings of work. That's inside. And that's popped up. By Mo. One out. Baltimore comes into this one in last place in the East. They're 10 games under 500 at 40 and 50. 15 games out of first. Yankees trail Boston by two. And Baltimore very much sellers in the trade market. Question is, what's the price? Price to this point is very high. Now when you wait, it's going to get lower. Another 10 days gets a little bit lower. There's a strike to Alexei. Alexei hitting at 279, 11 homers, 44 knocked in. I think, Hawk, the fans are surprised at how many guys actually clear waivers and deals are done after the waiver period. Well, almost everybody is put on a waiver. Well, not almost. Everybody is put on the waivers. That's just normal procedure in baseball. You just want to see what's out there. As that's fouled away right side. Right on the ledge of the LG Skyline Club seats. We keep hearing about the trade deadline being the 31st. It's the 31st without having to clear waivers. But some of the guys that are older with bigger contracts, maybe that stretch through next year, are put through waivers. And if you want to claim them, then you have them. Reaches out on the breaking ball. More. You also have their contract. And that's the biggest fa factor. And in fact, one year the Atlanta Braves were rumored to be going after Randy Myers then of the Toronto Blue Jays. So ostensibly to block that deal Kevin Towers in his first year as a GM with San Diego claimed Myers. Now they asked him if he wanted to take the insurance and he said no. So they gave him Myers who hurt himself two games later and for 15 or some odd million they had him. Nice deal. Turned out to be uh, uh, one of Kevin's worst, but he's made some good ones after that because he's still around. 1 0 pitch to Jermaine Dye. There's a strike. Jeremy Guthrie out of Pleasant Grove, Utah. 30 years old, 6'1, 195 pounds. Outfield for the most part, straight up, spread out. That's where they're going to be. There's the off speed pitch and the count 1 and 2. He's got a decent straight change and because he throws a fastball 94 95 miles an hour on occasion that straight change at 84 looks pretty effective if he keeps it down but that's a big hit. Two and two Jermaine four for eight lifetime off Guthrie. Jermaine in this series two for seven with a homer and three RBIs. Home run coming yesterday. There's a chopper two hopper. Easy one two three inning for Guthrie and after one it is one nothing Orioles.
they're all available. Book a group outing or party area today. Call 312-674-1000 or visit whitesox.com. Melvin Moore will lead it off here in the top of the second inning. It'll be Mora, Scott, and Reimold to face Jose Contreras, who gave up that unearned run in the first. In on the fists and hit softly into the seats. Mora, four for eight in the series. Drop down and the count one and one. Minnesota's won three in a row. We won two in a row. Both of us have picked up games on Detroit. And that's foul back. Standings are starting to look pretty good. They're starting to bunch up. Game and a half difference between the Sox and the Tigers. The Twins right there. Two games back. Tigers, of course, taking on the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. And Detroit did not score in the top of the first. Well, today, let's hope that Jabba Chamberlain against Edwin Jackson turns into a Yankee winner. Got a pretty good arms on the bump. Pretty good, but I think Chamberlain's. Career is in that bullpen, Hawk. Got to hurry. And they get it easy. A lot of people thought the same thing. The reason I said you know, that is. You Girardi know. thought it, but he was overruled by the front office. And it wasn't Brian Cashman. No, it was a little bit higher than that. But eventually. I think when they restock their starting rotation which they're going to do because quite obviously they have a few bucks in the bank. They're going to put Chamberlain as the premier setup man to Rivera and allow him to learn his trade under Mariano and then use him as their eventual closer. Well they already had that in place when it was taken out. Yeah. And it was working pretty well. <laughs> yes. But what good is Rivera if you can't get to it. <laughs> well they're finding out that a few times this year. Yeah, during that whole scenario, I felt bad for Joe. He and his coaching staff had made the decision in spring training. That's what they wanted to do. Now, if the hierarchy did not want that done, then immediately at the first of spring training or even before that, they should have said, What are your plans for Jabba? And if they said they were going to put him in the bullpen, work him out of there, set up man for Mariano. And then they said, no, that's one thing. But you now start a season, and then all of a sudden say, okay, we're going to put the starter, Chamberlain, back into the bullpen, or we're going to put the guy from the bullpen back as a starter. Well, I think they thought Wong would come back, and he hasn't really come back. And now they're calling up Sergio Mitre to get a start, which is a bit unusual. But of course, the Yankees are going to be front and center in. A couple of the proposed trades if they can't get Halliday and you can understand why Toronto might not want to trade him to the Yankees. Then they might go after Cliff Lee because they have the dollars and some pretty good prospects although they get a center fielder named Austin Jackson they don't want to give up and he's going to be a stud. Here's a 2 2 pitch Scott jammed him ate him up Chris gets two down. Well I heard an interesting little scenario that I agree with before the game. If you had to bet who was going to get Halliday, who would it be? One club. Philadelphia. I heard an interesting scenario that I agree with, and it's St. Louis. Jim Tomey, and the reason that the reasoning is what sold me on it. He's from St. Louis. But the reasoning being is that the Cardinals want to do everything they can to keep Albert Pujols there. No question. So they want to, this could be a big move that would keep Pujols. Is that just Nip Rimo? That is just the second batter hit by Contreras this year. Well, I think the big question, and uh, 
the new general manager there, Moseliak, would have to answer it. <clears throat> Colby Rasmus was most, most likely in that deal. He will be in this deal, too. That's the guy who would they yeah. probably want as front and center. They also have to give up some pitching, and they don't have a whole lot of it. And that could be one of the big problems. They might not match up player for player with what Toronto wants. To me, the other option would be Boston. Yeah, I think it'll be St. Louis first, then Boston second. Halliday will go to. You think they would mind trading him in their division? I know Boston has a world of talent. Well, the thing is, is it again going back? You've got a good general manager, a good general manager. As there goes the runner. There's a throw in the center field. The ball tailed away from Alexei. So they're going to be running every time they get on base. It'll be a stolen base, number three for Rymol. He's three for three in the second era for Castro. That's his second. And Rymold is a big man. He runs pretty well for a big man. That throw wasn't good, but it wasn't horrible. No, it just tailed away from him. Yeah. Just as the runner was in there. So the switch hitting veteran Jeff Zahn, or Greg Zahn, I should say, with a 3 0 count now. How about the Dodgers in the middle of that mix for uh, Halliday? Well, the big thing is just of get, but getting back to the before, who are you going to trade in your division or not? It doesn't make any difference where you trade as long as you get what you want. As there is ball four. And general managers who will not make a deal inside their division are cutting their market share or not marketplace down. Because, again, it, what difference does it make if you think you're getting the best of the deal? If you get the two, if the two best packages come from Boston and New York, then choose the best one. I mean, that was Frank Cashin, a legendary GM who won the world championship in 86 with the Mets, said, if I'm a better club after I made a trade, I don't care who I trade to. Exactly. As Torres takes ball one, Cesar hitting at 258, two for eight in this series, but he has faced Contreras 11 times and he is 0 for 11. That's why you have to watch the bunt. It seems kind of strange in this situation, but he's a very good bunter and he's weak from the left side. One and one to count. In fact, this tour is hitting 368 as a right hand hitter, just 198 in double the at bats as a left hand hitter. That's inside two and one. Brian Roberts on deck. that down so the chance of the bunt now is almost negated. Maybe Rod Carew you could say Mickey Mantle. bring him in but Cesar Sturz you don't you don't want to go back that far because he's got real good speed. And that's foul back. Well the ominous clouds that were over our ballpark prior to the game have disappeared. Leaving behind beautiful sunshine. Yeah. Short lead by Zahn. And the count hangs at two and two. The sudden very shallow and toward the line and left. Wise, shallow, and a couple of steps into left center. That is just foul, thank you. Almost hit the bag. Jose having trouble putting his tourists away. His tourists, one of three switch hitters in this lineup, you got. Zahn is Torres and Roberts. Oh. 
Well, here's where Paul has to be careful coming off the bag as he will with Zahn because looks like Jose is intent on throwing a fastball in on the hands of his tourists and just trying to overpower him. That's a ball that he can pull. He can also pull a splitter from the middle in. Yes, he can. High and wide. Yeah, this should be a pretty good pitch for his tourists to handle because of Brian Roberts on deck. Carly will suck it up, step on the back, and he pitches out of it. So nothing across after an inning and a half, one nothing birds. For the finale of this three game set, as you see, Jim and Joe, our director and the crew, and with Scotty Pods, Lisa, Layla, and Steve, they're going to go with Beckham. And Laura Fresso and Gianna Francesca Casson and I, we're going to go with Dwayne Wise. And of course, congratulations go out to Vinny and Laura on their recent marriage. And of course, Gianna Francesca Casson, the daughter of Julie and Ed Casson. Who takes care of all of us? She's six years old today. Jim Tomey takes strike one. Tomey hitting at 264, 16 homers. He's driven in 57. Four for seven in this series with two homers and seven RBIs, all those coming in game one. And that's inside. Two balls and a strike. Tommy was sitting on 557 homers. That fastball out of play left side. This is a wonderful combination. A prolific home run hitter and a guy that throws a lot of home runs and Guthrie's going to be trying to tell himself to keep the fastball up. Got him. All speed pitch. Looks like a backdoor breaking ball, whatever it was. Brian Knight thought it was good enough. Jim Tomey has a seat. Ball looked like it was outside. Looked like it stayed outside. Yeah, I think and Jim is telling him the same thing. He's not going to argue with him because it's a fait accompli, but. Maybe for next time he might get a break out there. Here's Polly. Takes ball one. Polly three for nine in the series with a homer and lifetime against Guthrie is three for eleven. And of the three hits, one of them stayed in the park. Two and over count. And 
congratulations go out to both Tom Watson and Stuart Sink. Watson for giving you the valiant effort. Bogey the last hole, got into a four hole playoff with Sink, lost it. And the new British Open champion is Stuart Sink. Big hack. Good pitch to hit. Just yeah. couldn't do it. Guthrie got away with one. He hung what appeared to be a slider. Well, letter high. Ball swung through it. And Guthrie was claimed off waivers from the Cleveland Indians. Last year, 10 and 12 with these O's. Pretty good at ERA of 363. All right, more, <laughs> more. <laughs> he couldn't quite get combobulated there. He became a little discombobulated. <laughs> Melvin Moore is playing as far as he can play in that infield, and this ball was coming to eat. <laughs> he just wanted to keep it off his shin as he was retreating. And he made the play. And you've been there, and I've been there. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> not a good feeling. Chris Getz takes first pitch strike. <laughs> one and one to count. And that's out of play souvenir left side. Top of the fourth in Cincinnati Brewers and the Reds are tied at three. Top of the fifth in Cleveland three two Seattle. Top of the sixth in Canada two one Toronto over Boston. Another easy one, two, three inning, and it is one nothing Baltimore. This is Chuck Garfine. For the inside scoop on the White Sox, check out my blog, The Sox Drawer, at CSNChicago.com, brought to you by Toshiba. Top of the third inning. Top of the order for the Orioles. Brian Roberts, Adam Jones, and Nick Marcakis to face Jose Contreras. Brian Roberts at the first pitch of the ball game. In the right field for Bay City, stole second, went to third on an error. Then with two out, scored on a wild pitch. He's been pretty consistent. 281 as a right hand hitter, 280 as a left hand hitter. One and one to count. 
All of his power however comes from the left side. Bottom of the second the Bronx no score Yankees hosting the Tigers. There's a strike right on the outside edge and that evens the count at two. Wayne Wise short out there in center as usual. That's pretty good pitch right there didn't get it. Thinking of the look at it. As they got that one the time before that one down a bit. That three two pitch slap foul. Make every home game a double play at U.S. Cellular Field this season with two ballpark hot dogs for the price of one. Visit an all-star concession stand during the first hour after gates open. For White Sox individual game tickets, call 866-SOX-GAME or visit WhiteSox.com. Young center fielder Adam Jones struck out his first trip. Takes first pitch strike. Jones has got some pretty good power numbers at 30, 13, and 50. He's got big power to straightaway center field. He got big power to right field as we saw in the first game. Hit that home run just reached out there and touched it deep into right. Well, he's he's a real deal. There's no question about that. Took something off that and had him out in front. Just 23 years old. You're talking about coming in here in July 19th, hitting at 304, 13, and 50. Right now, the league is taking advantage of him on a lot of breaking balls and off-speed pitches, but he'll learn to adjust to that. You know, you don't. As a young hitter, you don't learn to hit it. You learn to lay off of it, and that is what. I think so many hitting coaches where they make a mistake with young hitters especially way outside they try to teach them to become better breaking ball hitters and they work on that and work on that and they get away from what they can do and that's hit the fastball and then they put them in between you don't teach kids how to become better breaking ball hitters you teach them how to lay off breaking balls that's one of the things they like about Nolan Reimold is the fact that you very rarely see him swing at pitches out of the zone or get himself out on pitchers pitches. The payoff. And that's ball four, so good speed aboard. He's going to be going. He is only six for ten in stolen bases, but this is a pretty good guy to run over. Well, also, like so many young guys who have good speed, he hasn't learned the intricacies of reading a pitcher's motion, what to go on, and that instant acceleration that a base stealer needs. The only time that Jose is going to pick anybody off is if they're on going on first move. If they're going to do that, then you can get them. Outside of that, he's not going to pick anybody off. And if you're going to go on first move off Jose, he shouldn't be going in the first place anyway. There he goes. Safe. Well, three of the fastest guys, unfortunately, were three of the guys that Jose allowed on, and they just take advantage of that. Great jump, slow delivery home. Castro makes a decent throw, but just can't get it there in time. Now you got to hang out around second.
Arcakis fouls it back. So the count evens at one. Nick didn't have a good first at bat. He had Roberts at third with one out. Swung at first pitch fastball, which was in on the fist. Popped it up, got jammed. And Gordon Beckham made the catch and foul ground. Now, if that had been a two strike pitch, okay, but not on first pitch. Up high, two and one. Would be a nice time to use a pickoff move at second base. Just to shorten up the lead of Jones a touch. So right now he's getting a pretty good lead. It's not that difficult to steal third. Well, I like to see that employed a lot anyway. Because clubs develop reputations among guys who can run a little bit. Do they try to pick you off at second? No, not too much. Or yeah, a lot. And that's a perception that goes into guys who can run. Another factor, if he does steal third in this situation, then you have to bring the infield in. It makes Marcakis that much tougher. A lot of managers that's popped up. A lot of managers don't like to use that too often a second because of the threat of throwing it away. But I disagree with that philosophy entirely. This is the big leagues, and you've got you got to deter base runners. If you can't do it at first base, which Jose cannot, the only place he can deter a base runner a little bit is when he's at second. But you always got to get the hitter. That is first and foremost. You got to get the hitter. Full count. Aubrey Huff waiting in the on deck circle grounded out to end the first inning. So they starting to work himself into a little bit of a jam. Back to back walks. And here's Huff. Hit a soft ground ball to second. Good pitch. Pretty good numbers with runners in scoring position. In fact, this entire Oriole team is toward the top of the leaderboard in that department. After a fake, it's always good to use that pickoff. And what Jones does is he goes backwards, and as he's walking in, is when a shortstop should go. Got to hurry. Yeah. Back him up. And that'll do it. So he walks two, but throws the double play ball to Aubrey Huff.
up with Paul Canerco and our White Sox coverage starts with the Felco White Sox pregame live and it's the Sox and Rays in high definition tomorrow night at 630 right here on Comcast Sportsnet fans best friend. Gordon Beckham takes first pitch strike. Guthrie has retired the first six he has seen. He's retired them rather easily. Late call by Knight and the count 0 and 2. Gordon comes in hitting at 296. He's 5 for 7 in this series. That got a piece of Brian Knight. Son wants it low and away. And just misses with it. The next pitch was inside and fouled off. Getting ready to say if that pitch right there was fouled back and hit the umpire, <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. One down. Guthrie doesn't strike out too many guys. This is some high heat. He threw it right by Beckham. Dwayne Wise will stand in. Dwayne, 191, no homers. He's driven in six. Going to get his first home run today. Fouls that one off. And the count evens at one. Ramon Castro on deck. Finale of this three game set. Sox took the opener 12 to 8. Jim Tomey, two homers, seven RBI. There it is. Good Way call. back. Marquez looks up. You can put it on the board. Yeah. And this game is tied at one. Nice call, Hawk. That ball was gone the moment it left the bat. A no doubter by Dwayne Wise. He saved up all year and a Ford home run replay. And he got every bit of this. And Castro pops it up. Zon has room. And that is out number two. Of course, with that home run by Wise, the Alex Nelly, his family, will donate $100 to White Sox charities for every Sox home we hit throughout the course of the season. That is number 108. So $10,800 donated by Alex Nelly in loving memory of Ursula. And of course, that is newlywed Laura Fresso and Gianna Francesca Casson. There's their pick to click, Dwayne Wise. There's a broken bat. But we will go to the fourth tied at one.
And it's time for our Aflac trivia question Aflac. as the duck waddles by. Who is the last Orioles pitcher to win 20 games in a season? You should know that. Well, there's been a lot of them. <laughs> there has been a plethora of 20 game winners. 1971, they had four of them in the same four man rotation. Dobson, Quayer, Palmer, and McNally. That probably will never be done again. Well, I had to face all those guys, and believe me, it was not any fun. They weren't, I mean, they were comfortable, what you call comfortable over fours, all of them. Here is Laura, takes first pitch strike. And there's a man that won 20 games seven times. Hall of Fame 1990. Pretty good golfer too. Well he's blessed with the ability to do just about anything he wants to athletically. Yeah Jimmy and I played and he uh, hits it well swings at it well good mechanics. There's a strike on the outer half. Jimmy plays out of a club there in Baltimore. That Denny Satisher, the head pro, Caves Valley. It's a pretty good club. Yes, it is. It's a terrific club. And the one two. Bides. And it's foul. Jimmy used to have vanity plates on his car in Baltimore, and it was ACE, A C E. So in 1979, Mike Flanagan won the Cy Young Award. And one of the jokesters of the Orioles in 1980 spring training went out, removed them from Palmer's car, and put them on Flanagan's car. <laughs> Jimmy, as far as I know, never wore, never had the ace plates again. Softly hit off the end of the bat. Did you ever go to the vanity plate routine? No. <laughs> I'm, uh, no, I'm the farthest from that. One out. And here's Luke Scott. Popped up to Getz. Toronto leading Boston 3 1, bottom of the seventh at the Rogers Center. Bottom of the fifth in Cincinnati, still tied at three with Milwaukee. Philadelphia shutting out the Marlins 4 0 in that ball game. That's fouled back over our heads. Bottom of the fourth in D.C. Cubs hurting the nasty Nets eight to two. Ball and two strikes to the 31 year old Luke Scott. You know everybody's talking about what a good young ball club this Oriole team is. They do have a pretty good offense but they're not young. This is not a young club. No this is not a young club but they do have some good young pitchers coming. Now Weeders is young behind the plate certainly. Jones. Jones another guy that's very young. Rimold. Rimold. Well you get 31 at the top Brian Roberts. Jones is 23. Marquecas is 25. Huff is 32. Moore is 37. Scott is 31. Zahn is 38. And his tourist is 29. Gordon. Two down. Well, the building blocks are young, the guys they're going to use. And then the next wave of players coming up. You can have Chris Tillman, you're going to see this year, a young pitcher. Brian Mattis, a left hander, a number one draft choice. You'll see him in a year and a half to two. Guy by the name of Jake Arietta, you'll see in probably a year and a half. That's when the younger guys will start to come up. Rymol was hit by a pitch, just nicked him. And he's got himself a 2 0 count. Well, he loves the ball down, has some problems handling it up around the letters, but if you get it thigh high, he can hit it a long way.
I like his swing. I know that. He does a lot of good things mechanically at the plate. Well, they're viewing him as one of their building blocks, a left fielder for a long time. High chopper. Somebody's got to hurry. I'm old. Picks up his second. I don't know about yesterday, but a second infield hit. And that's just the second hit for Baltimore. This ball bounces straight up in the air, and then even if Alexei comes up with it, it is doubtful you're going to get him at first because Reimold has very good speed for a big man. The old Baltimore chop. Invented there. Here's on. He walked. Back in the second. And of course, Rimel picked up his third stolen base after he was hit by that pitch. One two and zero oh for them. One one and two for us. Fastball right there. Veteran receiver. Greg Zahn. And there's a base hit. Now Rimo will pull up at second. Well, fortunately, he hadn't stolen second. So he can only move to second. And Zahn's been around seemingly forever. That looked like a splitter that stayed up in the zone, took it into right field. Don's career started in 1990, a long time ago, and he's played with just about everybody since then. Spent a great deal of time in Toronto, parts of seasons from 04 through last year, before moving on to Baltimore, where his uncle Rick Dempsey played for so many years. Takes that pitch down low. Does his tourists. We grounded out to Canerco to end the second inning. And the count two and nothing. This is the man you want, not the on deck hitter. Now feel about equal distance, slightly to the left, and there's strike one. This is a pretty good chance that his tourist knows he's going to get a fastball here. Same thing held true with Zahn on the first pitch. That's popped up. Beckham. Foul ground. Makes a catch. And that'll retire the side. They threaten with two out. Can't score after three and a half is still 1-1.
was who was the last Oriole pitcher to win 20 games in a season? Affleck. And the answer, Mike Boddicker. 20 wins in 1984. The curveballing Mike Boddicker. And the guy with some really good control. That ball hammered by Alexei, but it's going to hang up for Rymole. So one pitch, one out. Here in the bottom of the fourth in this 1 1 tie. Well, what was the other pitch that Boddicker? He called it the Fosh. Fosh. Yeah, it was a straight, it was a straight change. It was probably the forerunner to the circle change. And Boddicker used it real well. Indeed he did. Eighty-three, he beat us in a big ball game in the playoffs. Mike Boddicker reminded me a little bit of you. That's what Rick Dempsey used to say. He said catching him was almost identical to catching me, except that he had the great straight change, and that was something that I never could perfect. Yeah, but you had the 67 mile an hour curveball. Had one of those. Assorted other speeds and variations of the curveball, but that straight change always eluded me. One one pitch. And that's foul. Hard to believe that these Orioles face left handed starters in nine straight games that tied an all time major league record broken today with Contreras going to the mound. Dave Tremblay who spent over 20 years in the minor leagues before finally getting his opportunity to manage. And he's managing the O's. And the one-two pitch. Those numbers will improve, of course, as his team gets a lot better, but it's a very tough division. Unless you've got Yankee money. Which only the Yankees have. That's the reason they call it Yankee money. It's true. But unless you got Yankee money in that division, if you make a couple bad signs, you're going to be buried for eight or ten years. But one of the ominous signs of baseball, they always talk about Yankee money because the Yankees could get ticket prices that most people could only dream about. And this year, the Yankees can't even get Yankee ticket prices because there's still few seats available there and you can understand it when you look at the pricing system of the brand new ballpark and talking about the Yankees they trail the Tigers one nothing top of the fourth inning and a full count to J.D. Jim told me on deck. Bring your friends and family to U.S. Cellular Field as the White Sox take on the Rays tomorrow through Thursday. For game tickets, call 866-SOX-GAME or visit WhiteSox.com. Third strikeout. For Guthrie, and it'll bring up Tommy, who was the first strikeout for Guthrie. Tampa Bay coming to town at 9 over 500. You know, talking about the Yankee ticket prices. If you bought four season tickets in the first or second rows, mm -hmm. and then the Yankees got the postseason, and you bought the tickets all the way through the playoffs for the four seats, it was over a million bucks. Eight hundred and ten for the rest of the season for the regular season. I would say that's a pretty decent expenditure. You want to move five six rows back. I mean the front row is nice and all. The 3 0. Get up stretch. It will know it's off the wall. 
dead gummit. That thing out there nose dive. Wow, you talking about a humpback line drive. Well, that's about as hard a single as you'll see hit. Reminds me of some of the singles hit in Fenway Park off the monster. As Jim gets a ball thigh high, which he just loves, and cranks it. Unfortunately, it went with a lot of topspin. And Marcakis right there gets it back in, and Jimmy is not even thinking about two. You could have hung out all the drawers in Cook County on that <laughs> thing. <laughs> that was a rocket. So here's Polly. He hit a rocket right to Mora at third base. Almost scaring Mora to death. And if you miss that, poof. Well, there's all kinds of ways to set up for ground balls. <laughs> That's one of the ways you can try to olay it, but it's actually hooking right into you, so you can't get out of the way. Well, that's the reason. When you're the <laughs> father of quintuplets, you got to protect something. <laughs> There's no question. There was a lot of protection. One and zero oh to Polly. That's high. He just missed it. Dead gun. Tommy just missed one. Paulie just missed one. And we are still tied at one. The White Sox face the Angels, and the first 20,000 fans will receive a poster featuring current and former Dominican White Sox players presented by Apple Vacations and the Dominican Republic Department of Tourism. For tickets, call 866 Sox Game or visit whitesox.com. Ball one to Brian Roberts leading off here in the top of the fifth inning in a 1 1 tie. Orioles have three hits. We have two hits. Brian Roberts has one of the three, and he has scored the one Oriole run. Now feel slightly to the left, and there's a strike. You don't want to walk this double. Oh, that's why this is going to be a fastball and you'd rather keep it middle out. And that's popped up and it's going to be in the seats or a souvenir. That's what you were looking for a fastball away hopefully one he could get under. He's one of the few real speedsters and he is that. That 
probably hits more fly balls than ground balls. Not a whole lot of guys do that. Count hangs three and two. Was they already at the 85 pitch mark? And there's nobody out here in the fifth. That ball hit hard. Wayne, yes. So a good job by Contreras coming back from the 3-0 against the speedy Brian Roberts. And you want the little man to hit the ball in the air, preferably to the opposite field. Brian has enough to hit it out if he pulls it, but taking it the opposite way, you'll take your chances in left center field in this or any other park. Yeah, occasionally he'll get one out over there, but very seldom. Adam Jones has struck out, walked, and picked up a stolen base. Takes first pitch strike. Hit. So he's going to be off. As he drops down, wants to keep it away, but gets it on the inner half of the plate. And young Adam Jones just drives it through the left side, past the diving Gordon Beckham. Arcakis has fouled out to Beckham and walked. Yankees have been kind enough to tie it up against the Tigers. To get the hitter, that's the most important thing here. That's plan A. Plan B is that you're not going to hold him or deter him by throwing over there. The only way you can stop him a little bit at first is by not throwing over there. And and just holding the ball. Hold the ball, try to disrupt his rhythm, and hope that he doesn't get a great first step. And the count right in the catbird seat is Nick Markakis, 2-0. Three and nothing. Plan A, plan A. You got to get the hitter. Well, now you go to plan B, which is what they used in the third inning, which was allow both Jones and Marcakis on with a stolen base. And a couple of walks, and then induce Aubrey Huff into grounding into a double play. That's plan C. That's the third plan. We got to go from A to C. <laughs> and the bullpen's going to go from A to B because they're starting to loosen up. 92 pitches he's run up to home plate here in four and one third innings. Off ground softly the first time up to second and then to Alexei for the double play. A little tardy right there. PJ Carrasco loosening up. Hopefully he won't be needed through this inning anyway. And 
and that's in the center field for a base hit. So that'll load him up with one out and bring up Melvin Mora. Jones, who has great speed, didn't really know if that ball was going to sink or hang up. And so he couldn't take off. Normally you think about scoring on this ball, but this ball didn't land that far away from Wise. And when you're that far down, you might as well keep on going for the simple reason that you're three quarters of the way down. Center field catches it, you're going to be doubled off second base anyway. And on the other side of that page, that ball was close enough with a shallow playing Dwayne Wise. It, the manager will not get upset that Jones did not read it. Oh no, I mean that's Can't just it. no. It's one of those things. But you're hung out to dry as a base runner. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can check your outfielders all you want, but on a ball hit like that, especially when a guy plays as shallow as Dwayne. Double barreled activity now. Pareda the left-hander. And Carrasco the right hander. So Mora twice has grounded out to Ramirez. Mora is also grounded into eight double plays. First pitch strike of beauty right on the outside edge. So the second run is going to score on a wild pitch. And they lead it two to one. That time it looked like Castro should have blocked it, but didn't. And we'll take another look at it. it. Looked to me like Ramon tried to backhand that ball, which is not anything you recommend doing. We'll take another look. And he does try to backhand it, and that's just bad technique. So now he's got to line into a bad base running double play. As it is 2 5 and 0 for Baltimore, 1 2 and 2 for our Sox as that pitch is out of play. 1 and 2 the count. So two wild pitches by Contreras today, and that is the reason for the two runs. Up. Now, time is called. This will be the ninety ninth pitch. The second hit batsman. Don Cooper is checking to see if Aaron Parade is ready. This looked like it was going to be a sidearm breaking ball that didn't break. Castro is out there to talk with Contreras. Sacks packed with Orioles and one out. And that's going to be it for Jose Contreras. So 
Sazi wants Aaron Pareda. Jose walked four, hit a couple, a couple wild pitches, and that cost him. So he departs, and we'll be back. Stores. 7 Eleven is Chicagoland's convenience store. Aaron Pareda comes into the game and he's going to face a big run producer, Luke Scott. Pareda 1 0, ERA 164 on for the 10th time, and the bases are full of Orioles. Takes it up and in. He has popped up to second and he has popped up to third. But Scott with 18 homers, 51 driven in. Big hack and no contact. <laughs> Little high neck in. And count two and one. Well, that's fine if you've got the confidence to be able to hit the outer third on the next slider or fastball away. Great is averaged over a strikeout an inning. He could certainly use one here. Now well, we need just a strike. Someplace over that plate. Three balls and a strike. Get foul, get foul. It will, thank you very much. So a full count. The ball just flipped off the end of the bat by Scott. They acquired him from the Astros. Was another one sided deal. This one involving Miguel Tejada going to the Astros. Payoff pitch. It is 3 1. So two wild pitches and a bases loaded walk. Only bad thing, they're still loaded and only one out. And here is Nolan Rymo. 
takes ball one. And there's ball two. Switch hitting catcher. Greg's on on deck. You play for a guy who probably after that would go out there and make a change after that pitch. He would have been most unhappy. Yeah. Earl Weaver. Yes. That didn't four. take long. Those four weren't even close. No. Nope. And it is 4 1. And now he's coming out to make a change. All right, so parade of the parts. Carrasco comes on and we'll be back. Time he inherits the bases loaded. As Aaron Pareda came on, walked the two men that he faced. So now it's a three run deficit, and DJ's going to have to get out of this inning with only one out. Contreras did not have particularly good location today. That's the first run scores on a wild pitch. That's the second. Scoring on a wild pitch. And Aaron Pareda with a couple of walks. One to Luke Scott. One to Nolan Rimo. And that's where we stand at four to one down. So here's Zahn. He has walked and he has singled. Want to know the count. Outfield straight up, spread out. Now time is called. So Mora at second. Scott checked at third. Scott at second. Rymol at first. And the count even. Now we got to get out of this inning because right now this is what you call literally just handing somebody gift wrapped a game. Well, a little damage control here, and you've still got Guthrie on the mound, who still is prone to throw home runs. So you're not that far down, but this becomes a key sequence. And count two and one.
Popped up. Stay in here. Castro back. And the count evens at two. I thought that one might have a chance to come back right there. It actually hit the back part of the screen. You don't see that very often. So it was trying to fight its way back, but. It's not quite enough. DJ with a 2 2 pitch. He did not go, and it's a full count. And that's out of play. If you're just tuning in, we have walked six, hit two, and have two errors. Just in the top of the fifth inning. And another payoff pitch. Base hit. That's going to score one, and it's a 5 1 ball game. And that'll close the book on Jose Contreras. Zon wins the battle. He gets that one up in the zone. Drives in his 10th run of the year. Seven consecutive Orioles have reached base safely. All started with a line drive into deep left center by Roberts. So here's his tourist. He's 0 for 2 as he takes ball one. Could be. Oh. They're going to get it, but a run scores. So they put a five spot on the board. Halfway home, we trail it six to one. Yeah, and the guy I uh, watching the 59, heck of a job. As here's Gets had a chance to win it, but couldn't get it up and down on 18. 
Meanwhile, a five spot has gone up on that board. We trail it six to one. Gets to the little number back. Here's a little number. The second. So one out. He had a little number back to Guthrie, his first at bat. If you can't watch your White Sox on Comcast Sportsnet, you can always catch a game on your computer with MLB.tv. It's the ultimate baseball experience featuring 100 out of market games a week live on your computer. For more details, visit WhiteSox.com where baseball is always on. Gordon struck out his first trip. Two and one account to Beckham. Gordon now five for eight in this series. That's popped up. Mora takes charge. That was a good job by Melvin Mora because he had by far the easiest play on it. He's on going out there because if nobody's going to take it, he's going to have to. It looks to me like Guthrie is directing traffic right where he should be, yelling everybody off the play except for Mora. Here's Dwayne Wise picked up his first homer back in the third inning. Laura Fresco and Gianna Francesca Cassins picked a click today. Oh, and to the count. Guthrie, oh, and one against us this year, oh, and three lifetime. But he's got himself a comfortable lead. As Wise did not like that. One, two, three inning. That's the third time that's happened. And we'll go to the sixth. More games that are lost than they're won. So far today, we're looking at one. Well, walks and lack of control has done in the Sox to this point. However, they know they have a guy on the other side of the field in Guthrie who's averaged about five and a third innings per start. So even though it looks bleak now at six to one, there's still a whole lot of chance and a very lively day at the ballpark. 
Van Roberts first ball swinging against Carrasco fouls it away. He's one for three. Yeah we got a lot of time. But Baltimore hadn't had to work too hard for those six runs that they have. Of course that is unusual for our pitchers. But bad days occur. And the count one and two. Tomorrow make your plans to be with us here at beautiful USA you'll feel first of a four game set against Tampa Bay. Gavin Floyd against David Price. If you can't make it that game will be over Comcast Sports Net Plus. As we check out our Felco upcoming schedule. Then on Tuesday Clayton Richard against Jeff Neiman that game also on Comcast Sports Net. On Wednesday Johnny Danks against James Shields that game over WCIU as he gone. One out. Castro wants it on the outside, and that's a good moving fastball away from Roberts. He swings right through it. And here's Adam Jones. He's one for two. But in the finale of that series, Mark Burley against Scott Casmir. And that game on Comcast Sportsnet. This and then it's on the road again, three in Detroit, and we go right back to Minnesota. Check that, four in Detroit. And then we go right back to Minnesota for three. At that split doubleheader. Well, that's going to be on Friday, Chicago time. First game at noon, second game at six. Pretty good pitch to hit and just underneath it, thank goodness. And then we come home on the 30th. Nice homestand. Four with the Yankees, three with the Angels, and three with Cleveland. Angels are a banged up bunch right now. Yet still, through all of that, they still have a three game lead over Texas. Drop down a little outside. Texas is starting to do what Texas usually does around this time and that is their pitching starts to do them in. They've lost four in a row. They find themselves just a game in front of Seattle in a battle for second place behind the Angels. And there you look at the standings. Now the drop down way outside full count. Well I talked to a friend of mine down in. Dallas and he said well, actually the Rangers this year caught up a bit of a break because of the weather. It has not been as usual that 120 on the field every night. Well, we could say the same thing here. Because this was in the 60s again and here we are <laughs> we're moving toward the end of July. We have a hard time getting out of the 60s. Well, I've never seen weather like this here. It's like Roger Bossert said. He's never seen it as well. Global warming. Right. Well, you know, before you get to the warming part, you got to go through <laughs> a cooling off period. <laughs> he gone. Two down. Well, after a succession of sidearm breaking balls didn't work, DJ stays over the top and puts it in a perfect spot. This is just an unhittable pitch, very much a pitcher's pitch. So a little cut fastball or slider. And bye bye Adam Jones. And here's Mark Akis. 0 for 1 with a couple of walks and a run scored. That a boy DJ. 1 2 3 inning. First one of those we have had and after five and a half they lead it by five.
it's time to bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Ball one to Ramon Castro leading off here. We got a chip away, guys. Chip away. Well, this is where Guthrie usually has some problems. And if that's the case, after Castro, we move to the top. Don't help him out. And the count three and oh. Greg Zahn going out to remind him that he does have a five run lead and the quickest way to give that back is to not throw the ball over the plate. He would of course couch that in positive terms. There's one. <laughs> that ball sailed over his head from Brian Knight tried to barehand it. From John, rather, and still missed it. And that's ball four, so the leadoff man is aboard the dreaded leadoff walk. Now, one of the things that's been very interesting, really interesting for me and my time in this game, which is 50 years, is when I first came in, the benchmark was over 300 innings. Oh sure four man rotation over 300 in. Then it went to 250. Then it went to like 225. Now it's at 200. And it's interesting to see how the mindset of pitchers especially guys who. Are starters have been conditioned to either one or two things. Five or six innings are 100 pitches. Well that's probably one of the worst stats that we have and although they like to quantify everything. The quality start. Six innings three earned runs. That's a four point five ERA. That's not real good. Breaking ball backdoored him and got him. Now Daddy Pies doesn't seem to think so and that's one out. Even when that ball got to the glove it wasn't a strike but it broke around the plate. Was said they can't believe it and he told him went around the plate. Ryan Knight of course disagrees. There's first pitch strike. Alexei is over to he's grounded to third and lined hard to left. And the ball just foul while well, we have a moment and it's not a big shout out for some super White Sox fans. In fact they were down in Kansas City with us. Cole Buckholz and Caitlin, Caitlin Patton. Of course the Buckholz family from Truesdale Iowa. Remember when the ball was on the ledge. I do. That was from Cole and Caitlin. One and two the count. Not hit hard. More up with it. And rack him up. So he walks the leadoff man, strikes out pods, and throws a double play to Alexei.
Bengals in Baltimore. Now this was the second game in a row Lofton did that. He is the only player in White Sox history to lead off two consecutive games with home runs. And that's our Kevin Wood disdain legendary performance. Top of the seventh inning not good. We trail it six to one. We only have two hits. Home run by Wise and a base hit by Tommy a rocket line drive humpback line drive off the right field wall for a single. First ball hunting is Huff. The White Sox faced the Yankees on August 1st. The first 20,000 fans, age 21 and over, receive a beer vendor bobblehead presented by Miller Lite. Miller Lite tastes great, less filling. For tickets, call 866 Sox Game or visit WhiteSox.com. So one out and here's Mora who's 0 for 2 was hit by a pitch and he scored. Takes a crisp fastball right on the outside edge. Breaking ball. And Mora underneath it. Ball was up, but it still has some dig on it. Bottom of the sixth inning, that New Yankee Stadium, Bronx Bombers leading Detroit two to one. Get that ball to Mariano. People are always asking me, who's the best reliever that you've ever seen in your time in baseball? And it's tough. It really is tough. Eckersley was just phenomenal there for a long time after being a starter who won over 100 games. And you go back to Roley. Roley was just outstanding. There they come back. In fact, Roley was one of the reasons I'm out of baseball because when I broke my ankle and broke my leg, he had me 0 and 2, screwed around and walked me, and then I was going to second base trying to break up a double play and broke them both. <laughs> I think it was a mustache. The fingers was real good. A suitor, you take you know all the guys who got the numbers up there. But the one guy with the most devastating pitch of any of the relievers I've ever seen, of course, Goose was tremendous. But the most devastating pitch of any reliever I've ever seen was Mariano Rivera. And also, the greatest big game reliever in history. Well, I'm not saying the other guys couldn't have done it, but he's had the opportunity right. to do it, and he did it. But he has had the most devastating pitch, that cut fastball. Well, especially because you know it's coming every pitch. I mean, it's not like there's a big surprise. Here it is, it's coming. The only surprise late in his career is now he's using it on both sides of the plate. And he's also, as there's ball four, so Scott walks. That's the seventh walk issued by our pitching, four by Jose Contreras, Pareto walk two, and now DJ one. And here's Rymold. He's perfect on the afternoon. He was hit by a pitch, had an infield single, and a walk. That coming with the bases loaded. Rivera's had four saves in the All-Star game to go along with all of the postseason saves that he's had during the course of his career. Out of play right side. Yeah, but I'm not going to say he's the greatest. I'm going to say that because of the opportunities he's had and the opportunities he has taken advantage of, you've got to put him right there at the top. I mean, along with some other guys. Now, you want to make a definitive one it's tough. I guess the only way to evaluate that would be if you had to have. A guy to make a save. For your family's life. Who would it be. I know who it would be for me. 
You'd probably take Laren Legro. No, that's Bert Campaneris. <laughs> okay. Bert Camp Campy would take Laren Legro. Because here in yeah, here in '77, Laren was the closer. I would take Dennis Eckersley. He was pretty good, but he didn't have the length of time that Trevor right. Hoffman has had right. and Mariano Rivera has had. I know that. But during his period, his heyday, he was just out of this world. Yeah. He gone. Right on the outside corner. Seventh inning stretch. We need five to tie. First pitch strike to Jermaine Dye leading off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Orioles with one in the first, Sox one in the third, homer by Dwayne Wise, and we gave them five runs in the fifth. JD 0 for 2, fouls that one away, and the count is 0 for 2. Tommy on deck and Canerco in the hole. And to this point, Guthrie has made some very good pitches.
Ball and two strikes. 32,069 in the house. Count hangs at one and two. Cubs thumping the nasty Nets 11 to three. That's in the bottom of the seventh in D.C. Top of the seventh. In New York, 2 1 Yankees over the Tigers. Softly hit, little three hopper. Seven game flex plans let you select the games of your choice and are a great way to guarantee matchups against the Red Sox, Yankees, and Tigers. Call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesox.com to purchase your plan today. Here's Big Jim. He's one for two, a single that was just a rocket. Humpback line drive off the right field wall for <laughs> Marquez. May have had designs on trying to get him at first. A long, hard single. They got the shift on. And the count two and one. Softly hit Roberts. Two down. And that'll bring up Pauly. Pauly is lined hard to third base, real hard. And then he just missed one in the fourth. That's eight ground balls thrown by Guthrie today. That's usually a week's worth for him. But he's been able to. Keep the ball down most of the afternoon. Well, I like Guthrie. And the reason I like him is not that his numbers are good or it's not that he's I think he's got a I think he's got a nice upside. You know, if he if he ever learned how to throw a change up, a straight change that would move rather than just throwing a normal straight mm -hmm. change, one that had a little movement on it. But As a rule, from a hitting standpoint, he's nice to hit at because everything is hard. Hard, here it comes. Hard, here it comes. And you like, as a hitter, you like guys like that. Well, he's been able to pinpoint his location today. He has just the one walk. Well, that's the reason I brought that up because of the fact of what you said earlier when you said he's made, as that ball hit hard, he's made some real good pitches. Yeah. Now, if he's going to do that, I don't care what he's throwing up there. If you're going to make good pitches, you're going to have a good, good outing. But the secret. Is to make some good pitches when you don't have your good stuff. Or to have something you can get these hitters off your fastball with. And he's got nothing up until this point to get him off his fastball unless he makes great pitches. Well, he had averaged a home run every five innings coming into the game today. But he hasn't made too many mistakes. No, he hung a couple of breaking balls and got away with them. But every pitcher is going to do that. And it's just a question if you're going to get away with them or not. I know as much. Many curveballs you threw, you had to hang a lot, and some you got away with. No question. Sometimes if you hung them, you'd like to hang them high enough that they just let them go. Or inside enough where they hit them yeah. hard but foul. Good check by Paulie, and the count evens at two. Seattle leading Cleveland 4 3. That game in the top of the ninth at Progressive Field in Ohio. Two out in the 2 2 pitch. Chopper 2 hopper. Another easy inning. Four times he has retired us in order.
All right, our Chuck, thank you very much. We're in to the top of the eighth inning. 6-6-0 six, six oh for the bad guys. 1-2-2 two, and two for our guys. Zahn is Turris and Roberts to face Carrasco. Zahn is perfect. A walk and two singles to go along with an RBI. And once again a reminder make your plans to be with us tomorrow night first of a big four game set with Tampa. Gavin Floyd against David Price. If you can't make it to the ballpark that game will be over Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Two and one to count. On Tuesday Clayton Richard against Jeff Neiman. On Wednesday Johnny Danks against James Shields and on Thursday Mark Burley against Scott Casimir. Three and one to count. Design. That's popped up. Gordon makes the call. Ramon got out of the way. One out. And here's our Mercedes assist of the game. Came out a couple of ground balls right back at DJ Carrasco. This is a pretty good play. That's off Nick Marcakis. And the other off the bat of Melvin Mora. Has fired out of play by his tourist who was 0 for 3. One and one to count. A one and two. One out. Outfield around to the left. Long look in by Carrasco. DJ now with that kick. Made a good pitch. Hits it off the fist. Got it just in the right place for the infield single. A lot of time pitchers believe that this ball is hit a little harder than it is when it comes back at them. Of course, there was no chance for Carrasco, and then with the speed of his tourists. No chance at all for Getz as he ranges up the middle. That's just the second hit off DJ, and here's Roberts, who's one for four. These Orioles will be back once again before this season's out. That's in August. Usually one trip in, that's about it, but the weekend of August 21st, 2nd, and 3rd, we'll see the Orioles right back here at U.S. Cellular Field. I miss going to Baltimore two or three times a year. I love Baltimore. That's a great city. The ballpark is beautiful. The inner harbor is just great. And the crab cakes are just superb. Indeed. Go to Moe's. Moe's is good. Michael's is good. Hi, pop up. And Polly makes the catch for out number two. But remember, when you go to Moe's, don't don't get a hamburger. No, but I also have to get that fish, fish sandwich, sandwich to go with that gigantic <laughs> crab cake. You know, you want to leave no crab cake unturned. <laughs> That's the biggest fish sandwich I've ever seen. Terrific, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Tony Pena loosens up in the bullpen. As Adam Jones steps into the box. He's one for three. 
day for a 23 year old. We talked about it earlier. You don't teach a guy like Jones to be a better breaking ball hitter. You teach him to lay off the bad breaking balls. That's what you teach him. If he ever learns to lay off that, it's like our Alexei. If he ever learns to lay off that first ball, breaking ball away, boy, they'll put some numbers up big time. Nice inning, another nice inning for Carrasco. Three and two thirds, no runs, just two hits. DJ has given up. Just tuning in has been the control of the starters. Jose had trouble with his control today, and as you mentioned earlier, Guthrie's been outstanding. Guthrie has been terrific to this point. The question is, can he keep it up? Right now, it doesn't look like he's weakening at all, and unfortunately, Jose had some very bad control in the fifth inning, and it wound up costing him. Big hack by Chris, and the count one and one. Yes, it's bounced back softly to the pitcher and grounded to second. Two balls and a strike. And two and two. Oops. E fan. That's a ringing endorsement to bring your glove to the ballpark. Mm -hmm. Especially if you got bad hands. And there's another foul ball. Chris working him hard. Next pitch will be number 99 for Jeremy Guthrie. That ball hit deep. Way back. He looks up. You can put it on the ball. Yes. It's not too late. Both home runs are solo shot. 22 given up this year by Guthrie as the Sox pull within four. That's a second by Chris Getz. He's now driven in 23. And our Ford home run replay. 3 2 fastball right down the middle. And Getz takes it out of the yard. And that's what we talk about so often. The more pitches that you see from a guy, the more dangerous you become. As here is Gordon, fouls that one back. 
Beckham's had a steady diet of high fastballs, and Guthrie's been able to throw it by him to this point. Backhand set, go throw, nice pick. One out. Open up and going for Baltimore for the first time today. Here's a look at Chris Getz. That's Jim Johnson, hard throwing right hander. The guy that they envisioned down the road if they do trade George Shiro, they expect that Johnson could grow into that closer role. Here's Wise. Oh, he just missed that one. Wow. High tower. Fly ball in the right field. So Dwayne now one for three with a homer, his first of the year, coming back in the third. So here's Castro. He's 0 for 1. Good eye, 2 and 0. Scotty Pods on deck. Get a couple of bloops and a blast right here. And a 3 1 pitch. Out and around that one. Another. Barreled up, but just a little too quick. One way or the other, this is probably going to be it for Jeremy Guthrie. Made a good pitch there on the fist, and that's going to be a souvenir. Six, seven, and zero oh for the Orioles. Two, three, and two for our Sox. As Guthrie has just been tough today, trying to pick up his first win over our White Sox. As Tourist making the call, has the ball, and that'll retire the side. But the home run by Chris gets his second. We'll go to the ninth. We need four to tie.
Right now, let's check out our White Sox minor league report. There you see Charlotte lost yesterday. Carlos Quinton, two for three with a homer, two RBIs, scored three. Restovich, Michael Restovich, big, strong right handed hitter, three for four. Birmingham continues to win. They're tied for first again in the second half. They blew everybody away in the first half. Dan Hudson got the win. I believe he is five or six and oh. And Winston Salem won six to five. That's our White Sox minor league report as we get set to go to the top of the ninth. 6 2 Orioles. Tony Pena comes into this one on for the fourth time. The ERA and even six. Another. DJ did exactly what he was supposed to do. Carrasco works three and two thirds, no runs, two hits, one walk, three strikeouts. And the count goes to 2 0 to Nick Marcakis, who is 0 for 2 with a couple of walks and a run scored. Outside. Come back and get him, Tony. That Tiger Yankee game now in the top of the eighth, with the Yankees leading two to one. Because there's a strike. Now feel straight up, just about equidistant. So a full count for the 25-year-old, just solid, solid player, Nick Marcakis. And the payoff pitch. Marcakis now, four for 12 in the series with a homer. And once again, the 3 2. Ball hammer just foul. Thank you very much. For our guys in the ninth inning, it'll be the top of the order: Pods, Ramirez, Guy, Tommy, and hopefully a host of others. That ball in the left field. That's a can of corn for Scotty Pods. So a good job by Tony Pena. Behind in the count, three and zero. Comes back and gets it. So one out. <laughs> Aubrey Huff will stand in. He's one for four. Takes down low. The two oh pitch. Boy, that ball was just absolutely scalded. Hopefully, it did not get Pauly on the wrist. That'd be down into the corner. Fan interference. So that'll be a double. And that ball was a one hop rocket. I think it did get a part of that wrist. Hopefully, not too much of it. It's fastball right on the inside corner, and Huff just smokes it. Looks like he got most of the glove, although hit a bit of the wrist. And he winds up at second base. And here's Mora. 
Morris 0 for 3. Toronto, if you're just tuning in, beat Boston 3 to 1. Doc Halliday over John Lester. Apparently, he's really allowing these trade rumors to bother him. <laughs> That's a complete game effort by the good doctor. Now, Pena wants to talk to Castro. So, as we speak, the Yankees trailing Boston by a game and a half. If there is two out in the top of the eighth inning for the man aboard. And we may have ourselves a new leader in that ball game. As that's waved at in the count of one two. That's a good hard slider. Well off the plate but very much unhittable. But Moore couldn't check his swing. The 0 2. Gave him a good pitch to hit on 0 2. What was your philosophy when you were pitching on 0 2? If there was a guy that I knew that couldn't deal with what I had, I just went right after him. Otherwise, I would try to make it enticing enough. I wouldn't throw it way wide or way high or way down. But I didn't feel you need a wasted pitch at 0 and 2. I wanted to make it good enough where he would swing at it, either miss it or make very weak contact with it, but make it enticing. Or if I knew I could get him, just wipe him out on the 0 2 pitch. That's the way most good pitchers think. They don't think about wasting a pitch. Because you don't have that many good ones really in your arm to be wasting good, any. Good pitchers, the, the phrase wasting a pitch is not even in their vocabulary. And good managers don't mind, don't mind guys getting base hits on 0 2 as long as it's not a hanging breaking ball. One out to Mora and a one two. That's in the center field, and that's going to be a base hit. So Mora, who was really struggling coming in, now one for four today, five for 13 in the series. Mora against us has been a good player. He's one of the guys that Baltimore would love to be able to move. They have a number of guys that they want to build around. But they're certainly going to listen to offers for Huff. Mora if anybody wants him. And a couple of their. Older pitchers. Scott fouls that fastball back in the upper tank. Well when you're in a situation Baltimore is in now. Which is better than they've been in in quite a while with some good young players they have down in the minor leagues. There for years and years they had nothing down there. Nothing. Well, they traded them away and they used their resources on buying older free agents. That didn't work out. But in the situation they're in right now, they're still going to have to bite the bullet for a while. But overall, with the exception of just a very, very few players, anybody in that club's available. Or should be. Well, they've made two great trades to Honda to Houston, which helped them a lot, but Bedard to Seattle was state of the art as far as they're concerned. That helped build their baseball team. Now, I don't know if those trades are out there. Right now, the asking price is a whole lot higher for George Sherrill than it would be for Aubrey Huff, but both of those guys are going to be sought after. Jeremy Guthrie another guy they love to see this type of performance from Guthrie because they would move Guthrie and there are teams who need a starting pitcher. Well you got a lot of scouts in attendance. And one reason being Guthrie today. There's, there's no, more here today than there were yesterday or the day before. There's no question. And there's a lot of guys that would love 
a starter at the tail end of their rotation. Now he's at the front end of the rotation as far as the Orioles are concerned the way they're built today. But for a contending team he would be at the tail end of the rotation it would probably be very valuable. There's a shot base hit. So one more is going to score on the double by Scott and it's a 7 2 Oriole lead. RBI number 54 this ball right down the middle and Luke Scott who drew a base on balls and drove in a run in the fifth inning now drives in one with a double picks up his first hit of the series he's now one for nine. Tigers did not score. In the top of the eighth. Alexi back halfway. Right side in. Nolan Rimmel takes upstairs. One out, ducks on the pond. And the count two and oh. Off speed had him well out in front. Big motion pull the string a little bit. And the count evens at two. Primal from Bowling Green University in the Mid American Conference. Yeah, he was named player of the year in that conference his senior year. It's one of the great baseball conferences in the country. 20 home runs he had. Pretty good rip. I tell you, he, he got a chance, this kid. He got a chance. He doesn't swing at too many bad pitches, and he does have big power. And we've seen him in left field be a pretty good defender out there with a good arm, so he think very highly of him. Well it looks to the eye like he's got a big swing but it's not. It's not a big swing at all. He's quick to the point. He knew it. He gone. That slider just froze him. Started to come at him. He couldn't pull the trigger. It stayed over the inner portion of the plate. So now two down, and here's Zahn, who's two for three with an RBI. Up high. See what Pena feels about this situation with this. Tourists on deck. And here's the strike. A lot of times there'll be a little history between some Latin players because of the winter ball scenario that they've either had good luck against them down there or bad luck against them down there, which we don't know about. Well, he's just coming right at zone. Count one and two. Oh. 
Yeah, he came at him once too often. That's a three run homer in his 10 2 Orioles. Fourth home run by Zahn. All of them coming from the left side. So he's driven in four today. Our forward home run replay. Fastball on the inner third and gone. So here's this tourist. He's one for four. Had a little infield single. One of only the two hits that DJ gave up. There, a little soft line drive, and that'll do it. But damage is done. A four spot will go to the bottom of the ninth. Not good. Listen in on Ozzy's post game remarks, so don't miss USA Cellular White Sox post game live immediately following the game right here on Comcast Sportsnet, fans best friend. Jim Johnson comes into the game. It's a big 10 to 2 Oriole lead. Sox have managed just three hits today. They made a couple of errors, walked many more than they would like, and there's a look at the numbers on Johnson. ERA and even three. Left handers have done absolutely nothing with him. So he comes in to nail it down for Guthrie who went eight innings gave up a couple of runs on three hits. Walk one fan five. This is about as good as we've ever seen him look. Well. As we were talking earlier I like Guthrie. I think he's got a big upside. As Jason Nix. Will be the hitter. But. Uh, Today as you mentioned early on he was making good pitches made a lot of them already go after the fifth inning up until that time and continued to make them. First pitch strike. Next hitting in pod spot pods was 0 for 3 today. Johnson has a little hitch in his delivery that adds to his deception. That's high and foul. Ryan Anderson in the on deck circle. Owen oh to the count to Jason. Hang here. Right there. 
when you don't get that many at bats when you see a hanger your eyes get a little big. That's two that he's just crushed but well fouled on the left field line. Another one gets that one over. And that's out number one. Pretty good curveball, even though it doesn't break much. It kind of backs up, but it was in the zone. And now there's two outs to work with. I want one to count to be a. Broken bat, and that's going to be a base hit. Almost a matter of bat cola. And Josh Fields comes up after we take a look at. Johnson trying to run a fastball in on the hands of Anderson who does break his bat but winds up with a base hit. So fields for die. Josh hitting at 225 six homers. He's driven in 26. That ball hit high and deep stretch. Get on back there. Rymo right in front of the warning track hauls it in. Two down. And that'll bring up Jim Tomey. Took that pitch nicely. One and oh the count. And two and nothing. And once again a reminder, make your plans to be with us tomorrow night right here at beautiful US Cellular Field. First of a four game set against Tampa Bay, Gavin Floyd against David Price. And the count. Three and oh. Turn him loose. They did earlier on that line shot off the right field wall for a single. It's not very nice a lot of times though to turn somebody loose three and oh in an eight run ball game. Took a pretty good half yes, at that one. He did. <laughs> Jimmy pretty much only has one swing. And that's as hard as he can swing it. And maybe he'll make some contact. And there's ball four. So here comes Pauly. Pauly's 0 for 3 today, but he swung the bat pretty well. Hit a bullet down to Mora. And he just missed. Hitting one out of here in the fourth. Then he grounded to short. Let's give him a little bit of a finish right here, 14. Big hack. In New York, Yankees leading Detroit 2 1. It's the top of the ninth inning, two out. And the Tigers have a man aboard facing number 42. I'll call for a cutter from here. And you may be right. <laughs> a 
And we're down to our last bullet 0 and 2 the count. Yankees trying to sweep the Tigers. Sox were trying to sweep the Orioles here, but it didn't work out. They scored one in the first, five in the fifth, and four in the ninth. We scored one in the third, home run by Wise, and one in the eighth, home run by Getz. A ball and two strikes to Pauly. But the pitching matchups overall in that series for them, we're going to run Floyd, Richard, Danks, and Burley out to the bump. The Rays are going to run Price, Neiman, Shields, and Cashmere. It's going to be a good series. Yeah, it should be a fun series. Defending American League champs. And a count two and two. Well, defending champs who are starting to heat it up. And that game in New York is history. It is over. 2 1 Yankees. And this game is over. 10 2 Baltimore. Well, it boiled down to the starters, the control. Ours was not good. Theirs was outstanding. Well, credit Guthrie today because this is about as well as he can possibly pitch, and the Orioles do salvage the finale of the series. So that's behind us, and it's looking ahead to Tampa Bay coming in tomorrow night. Plenty of